you know, when they get in that car, is this the last time I'm saying I love you or am I going to see you tonight in bed? Hello and welcome to the Dirt Track Confessions podcast with your host, Mandy Pouch Mahaney. Dirt Track Confessions begins in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dirt Track Confessions. I'm your host, Mandy Pouch Mahaney. And today we have Summer Small joining us. Hello. So, Summer is uh, the girlfriend of Logan Schuhart. So I'm sure many people know Logan, but like today we're going to talk. This is girl talk today. We're, we're diving deep to the woman next to the racer. I figured, you know, it is time to bring some more female voices on here. And instantly I thought of Summer. She, you do a lot, girlfriend. You do a lot that kind of gets unrecognized, right? So um, welcome. I'm excited to dive in. So Summer, kind of give us, give us a quick backstory, if you don't mind, you know, um, about yourself. Because I know you said Lincoln, I think it was, was kind of like your playing ground. Yeah. So um, I'm 26 years old and, um, you know, I was born and raised in Hanover, Pennsylvania. It's a small town. Well, it was a small town. Like, you know how it's just getting bigger, more people are coming. But um, I always went to, a lot of people know what and where Lincoln Speedway is, you know, the Outlaws race there. Um, I used to go there when I was a little girl with my dad and I have two older brothers. So, and even I go with my mom too, but as a family, we would go there. But, um, you know, I never knew what, I had no idea what the world of Outlaws were or mm -hmm. I mean, I, I went and just, I was like, oh, race cars. I, you know, I didn't really understand anything of it. So the whole, when I met Logan, that was a whole new game for me. Yeah. When, <laughs> so that was, diff that was different, but you know, other than that, um, yeah, like I would say, I don't really know what else to say about myself. I mean, <laughs> that, that I was just, I didn't really do much when I was not with Logan. So <laughs> It's a whole now, new now world. I'm, now I'm in a whole new world and it's, it's busy for sure. <laughs> it's wild. Like I, it's when you're 15 to 11 years later, like I'm sure completely different than what you're expecting. Oh yeah. Like when I was 15, 16 years old, I was not expecting I was going to be finding this guy who raced it, like this dangerous freaking race car. And, you know, I'm traveling nine months out of the year, like, it's just not what I would have expected for my life at all, for sure. <laughs> oh, I, love that. I love that. So um, obviously you guys grew up in like the same area. Yep, I, same town, I think like maybe 10 minutes apart. That's insane. And yeah. so you actually, it's, you just celebrated your, your five year, right? Five years ago. Yeah, yesterday we did. Yeah. <laughs> so how kind of give us a little bit of story. How did you guys meet? Sure. Um, so. I'm, okay, so starting way back, my parents are really good friends with the Shoeharts, mm -hmm. like his dad and that. So actually, my parents used to babysit Logan sometimes, and he used to play with my oldest brother because Logan is five years older than me. So my oldest brother used to like hang out and play with him, mm -hmm. you know, but I had no idea. I was too young to even know that he was, you know, there at the house or anything. So when we did get together, we kind of put two and two together. And we're like, oh my God, like we have actually known each other for a really long time. Um, but like being in a small town, I never really ran into him ever. You know, he, he was away and I was here at home. So mm -hmm. I never knew who he was or um, yeah, I had no idea. And I actually ended up, I worked with his sister at a restaurant okay. and um, you know, I worked on the bar side and she worked at the, you know, the more fancier uh, dinner side. Well, little did I know she kind of had, I guess Logan had his eye on me and she kind of was saying like, and at that time I was in a relationship. So, you know, I wanted really, you know, he had asked me out and I had turned him down and that, and, you know, a couple, I think it was a year later, he ended up showing up at the rocks and which that was the place that was called. And I kind of was like, oh, he's cute. And then little did I know him and his sister were like kind of behind this, but 
Um, it was my 21st birthday and he ended up buying me a drink that night. Uh, it was actually the weekend after my 21st birthday. Um, and then after that, we, we hung out like every single day and then he left for Australia. So I really, always, yeah. And all we had was FaceTime and we, we did it for what, uh, I, I was, I was insane. I was up at 4am watching this dude race that I had barely even known. So I knew right away that I, I liked him and it, it's kind of a cute little story, but yeah, now five years later, here we are. <laughs> I love that. And it's, it's wild. I never would have expected like you guys grew up in the same town. Yes. And I mean, literally 10 minutes apart, like his dad, cause he had lived with his dad. Um, and my, where I live, I've lived there my whole life. Um, really we never ran into each other, not, you know, grocery shopping or bars or anything I because Logan isn't the type to go out so obviously mm-hmm. I was I'm surprised I met him in a bar because he's yeah. not a person that likes to go out so that is funny okay mm-hmm. I love that good to know all right yeah. so um so let's see your your first year you know you guys I don't know was it when you guys started dating or what it was but you, you were balancing, you know, student life, going to college and the race life, you know, dating Logan. What, like, what was the deciding factor for you, you know, to step away from going to school and going full time on the road? I mean, was that, was that like a really hard decision to make? Cause I feel like for a lot of people, it's like, it was, is he the one to drop this? (laughs) Yeah, right. And it, 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 it's a huge decision for sure. You know, when I first started dating Logan, I was in college and, you know, I, I was very strict and sturdy on my answer. And I said, no, I want to finish. And, you know, I'm not coming out on the road right away with you. You're crazy. <laughs> so the first year was really tough. We did the long distance thing and, um, I did go out for the whole summer with him. Um, that was pretty tough for me being, I never, a lot of people didn't know this, but I never left PA. I never traveled ever. I never even flew on a plane, you know, like, like when I say my life turned 360, it turned 360. So when that year was tough, the following year, you know, I really had to make the decision, you know, do I stay in school? Cause I still had probably like another two years left. Mm -hmm. Um, am I going to be able to do this? And you know, I'm not going to see Logan and his, um, my brothers had always warned me from the beginning. They're like, this isn't going to work out somewhere. Like you're never going to see him, you know? So, and I knew I really liked him. Mm-hmm. And, um, so then I made the decision to, you know, I did drop out of college and it's not like the proudest thing that I would, I love saying, or that I did. Um, there's a lot of people that were disappointed in me, but now looking back, if I did not do that, would I be in the position I am now with Logan, you know? So, um, and now I've, th- this was my fifth year on tour. This will coming up will be my sixth full year. And it's just crazy to think that. So and, uh, people are always going to have their comments. And I, uh, this is my, um, I don't know, inspirational talk here is everyone what people have to say about you it's just a reflection of where they are at like what their fears are so so kudos to you for taking that leap like truly following your heart I love that yeah Yeah, it wasn't an easy decision for sure but no and I I feel being the woman and Logan being on the road especially like I see it with my husband with Mike is I don't want to say they're lost without us but having that support system being there with them like they're kind of lost without us. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> Let's be real. They really are. I know. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. So going from never leaving Pennsylvania, girlfriend, like that is insane, to life on the road, which I'm just going to assume it's probably with a lot of guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. How was that? I mean, I have Hannah, you know. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Had, I always had Hannah. You know, she was... She was, a, uh, you know, she started a year before me, her and Jake updated a year before me. So she was on the road way longer, you know, a year before me. So she kind of knew, she really helped me. She led me around and kind of, you know, what do I bring? Or, you know, she, she really did help me a lot. And I appreciate her for that. 
Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, so you had Hannah, which I did have I, Hannah. I did not realize that. Okay, you don't have you don't there. I mean, you got to think like uh, when I got my first year, I really, really, really struggled. You know, my mom is my best friend, so the fact that I wasn't, I couldn't just drive to her anytime that I needed her or I needed somebody to talk to. You know, you can't really. I'm not one to trust many people, so. Um, it's definitely hard out there to know who's there for you for real and who isn't. Um, so it was my, it was probably my first two, uh, actually three years until my really good friend Anastasia had came out and, you know, she's the one that I, you know, I always say, make sure you have at least one person out there that you can fully trust. And she's the one. Oh, good for you. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Trust me. I remember my first year. Um, yeah. when Mike got his ride and we were following the super dirt car series and traveling, I'd be calling like, Hey, listen, I, I grew up with this lifestyle, mm-hmm. but I never had to do the work, <laughs> like do the actual work. Yeah. And so I'm over here, like call my mom, my dad <laughs> practically crying be like, what am I doing with my life? Like this, this is too much for me. And yeah, yeah. there was ma- many, many days and nights I would be crying to my mom just because it was hard it was really hard and it just now now it's like easy life for me now everyone's used for used to me going and coming so it's it's a lot better now and I you know I have my people out there you make up you meet a lot of great people for sure Mm -hmm. that's true yeah absolutely like especially that's got to be you've, you've probably have friends all over now, but do you, yeah. you know, but do you have, um, well, does Anastasia, does she follow the series too? Or she does. so her husband is Trent Gower and he is the photographer. So you yes. probably, yes, yes, yes. that's, that's her husband. And yeah. you know, they, they, uh, you know, they got, was they got married last year, but she's been on the road. This will, I think will be her third year. I might be wrong, but it is it might be her third because she came out my third year and this is going to be my sixth year so I'd make sense if this will be her third oh good okay so speaking of family I'm, I'm sensing that you're close with yours right? very <laughs> yeah so tell me you know with Logan racing like what 80 plus races a year probably close to 100 you know I think last year we did 90 something and I think this year on the schedule I think it's like 89 I think it's a lot. Okay. It's just, let's just say it's a lot of, we race a lot. <laughs> you do, you do. But like you said, you're away nine months out of the year. So how, how do you manage? Cause like for me, I mean, I have my husband, my brother, my nephew, my dad, all mm-hmm. four of them race, you know? So it's like, I'm trying to cover all bases, but you know, being away so much, do you feel like you miss out on at home stuff a lot um you know this year was pretty tough for me too because I um my brother and my sister-in-law had um my nephew um so you know his one-year birthday was this year and it just happened to happen that we were home racing at Williams Grove and I got to be there um but you know I had to deal with in previous years you know my brothers got married while I was on the road but you know I obviously had to come I was in the wedding I couldn't miss that so you have to really just um know when you need to come home and when you don't you know this year too my brother was in a really bad car accident and you know I was in California and they you know they're in PA um so my mom when I knew she was calling me at 5 a.m my time you know, it was eight o'clock there. My mom knows every time, you know, if I, my time zone's different. So it ended up, you know, you have to deal with that kind of stuff. And, um, it's not easy for sure. Um, but I definitely, you know, I have a niece coming, um, and she is, when did she do April? So, you know, I'm going to have to come home for that. So you just have to kind of, you know, flying was never my favorite thing, but now it's kind of like uh, a day job for me. So, <laughs> And there are so many times I, same thing. I hate to say like you cry, you get emotional, but missing such important moments like that. I feel we should like 
join forces here, summer bond together, because there's so many times I truly, I feel alone. You know, there's so many times I feel alone and it's, and someone brought it to my attention. I think it was like last month. Cause I very rarely, I don't say I don't not get burnt out, but there were times yeah. over the summer when I'm like, I, I just cannot see people at the races. I, mm-hmm. I, it was too much, too overwhelming. And, yeah. you know, being in the spotlight and having to be like on and just smiling at all times, it, it gets draining, doesn't it? Yeah, you definitely get burned out for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know like I'm usually, I'm usually um by like the last, like I would say two months left of the season, I'm done. Like I'm just totally over everything. Um, I'm ready to go home, spend time with my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is draining for sure. <laughs> it is. It is. So- and I'm the same way because I think it was. I don't know. Did you guys go out to PRI? Oh, uh, Logan did. I don't go. I was like, why do I need to go? <laughs> well, that. But at the same time, I'm kind of like. I just stopped seeing these people and you want me to see them again. I'm like, I need a break. We need, we need a break. (laughs) Yes. Like I, and, and I get like Logan needs to go sponsors, like everything. Um, and of course it happened to be on my birthday this year. So he had to miss my birthday. So there's another kind of thing that you just need, you know, you, you know, Logan misses a lot too. So it's not just me. (laughs) Oh, so we're, uh, you're a Sagittarius. Yeah, so is Logan. Oh. His birthday Saturday, so oh, we go. Awesome. Okay, yeah. we can, we can get along. I'm a Sagittarius too. Oh yeah, yes. Usually, I feel like two Sagittarius's they get along pretty well. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, yes. But I've I've read though in some cases where you shouldn't date a, another Sagittarius. But me and Logan, I just I guess we we're just very two different people that it just it just it works hurt. out. I guess. Oh. <laughs> Trust me, if I were to actually follow, because Mike is a cancer, and if I were to, we, no. You guys all click, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, how, but how do we work? You know, this says we're not supposed to work. How do we work? I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, so, okay. So tell us, you know, what would you say other than being, you know, Logan's support system here what what are your duties on the road I mean I know you earlier today before you hopped on here you were doing online orders that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so what is what does life for summer look like so you know everyone sees me in the t-shirt trailer so I obviously do that for Logan um you know uh today yes I was doing orders we had like I would say like I did like 70 orders this morning um his mom uh, usually does the orders, but she does another job. So um, I, you know, when I can, I will help her out. Um, so, and it's our busy season or busy time because Christmas is coming. So that's definitely, um, you don't want to get behind for sure. She would have had like, oh my God, so much to do tomorrow. <laughs> but so yes, I do that. And then on the road too, I actually am creator and owner of Bubba's Helping Paul. I don't know if you even know what that is. Do share, um, please. I'm excited. <laughs> sure. Um, I I started it in 2021. Um, and it just was like, um, well, you know my dog, Bubba. Who doesn't? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Who doesn't know Bubba? Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. Like he perked up when he heard him. Um, but so I just started out doing hero cards for him. I uh, charged a dollar for them and all proceeds I had donated to shelters, you know, and that's how it originally started. So, and I did that for a whole year and a half in that. And then people started wanting more. They wanted t-shirts of them. They wanted, um, decals, all that fun stuff. So, you know, I finally came in and I started doing that. Well, then I was like, I started this Facebook group, which, um, if you're listening, follow it. It's Bubba's Helping Paul. Absolutely, um, please do. Like now, it's more of like I have a boutique. It's literally I I do have Bubba's stuff on there still for the fans for Bubba. But I mean, I have racing gear on there. I have you know pet products, pet accessories. Like it is grown. And I this year I have been very busy off season dealing and doing that because it's just gotten somewhere that I have never even thought that I would have 
been for sure. So that keeps me busy on the road. It's a little bit harder because I can't have the inventory like I do now, but, um, yeah, that's a, that's a fun thing to do for sure. <laughs> that's amazing. So I'm a busy, busy girl. Yeah. Definitely. When I love a lot of people think like you're on the road, it's vacation. No, literally we work all the time like we'll have some free time to go do some fun things but most of the time i'm in the trailer working i'm doing inventory or logan's working on the car or i'm doing bubba stuff it's just it's just a long list every day it's never ending like there really is Mm -hmm. no off season and when you're on the road like yeah from point a to point b like maybe Mm -hmm. maybe maybe there's downtime but i'm sure you're getting stuff done so yeah so, okay. I've always, I've always wanted this because, you know, with me, I always, I'm always looking for someone to sell our merchandise to the races because I do our videos, you know, I'm always vlogging and it's like, yeah. I, I can't be in two places at once. I would love to sell the merchandise and, and get to talk to the fans and yeah. in that aspect, but also, you know, how do you keep up with the stock? So Logan's, you said Logan's mom does like the, I, I'm assuming at home, like the online orders. Yeah. So I actually used to do all the online orders on the road. It just got to the point where it was way too much for me. And okay. you got to think, you got to go to a post office in the motor home. Like it just was impossible. Yeah. And Logan would complain all the time saying like, I'm not taking you. Like, how are we going to do that? We don't have a car. So like we don't have a car out on the road I have a scooter like a little ruckus scooter that I drive around to get me yeah backpack like it got to the point where I had bags and bags and bags of I'd have to take a couple trips you know so thank god that she now does them at home um so that really gives me some more free time for sure on the road because that would that took up most of my time but yeah she does that um you know she stays home most of the time you know she comes out with the bigger races or whatever so you know I work the trailer pretty much every weekend every week race or whatever we you usually you don't not see me in there like so um I mean we kind of work as a team as you know if I'm low on something you know she will send me suitcases of stuff like inventory like because Bill is Logan's PR guy so he comes out constantly and that's Dana's husband so um you know, we're just constantly bringing inventory back and forth. You know, we kind of steal from each other and it's, but again, that's a lot of work too, because if you, if I don't have, you know, you want, you don't want to be like, oh, oh, I'm sold out of that. Sorry, sir. Like when you're at the races. So it's kind of tough. Like if I have, if I'm like 10 shirts left, I'm, I'm texting, you know, right that night and saying like, Hey, I need this. So it's just a constant, you have to, you know, inventory has to be correct. I've always wondered that because you guys don't mm-hmm. go home really enough to no race. no so she you know if we get new shirts or whatever you know they get delivered to the racetrack but uh if I have old shirts that I need because when we order shirts half of them come to me and then the other half go to her at the warehouse so it it's a it's a lot and we yeah. have a lot of stuff so um, girl, I always love seeing everything you guys come up with. <laughs> I'm always like, okay, let me go check out their website and be inspired. I don't know how you do it, how you keep up with it, but you always have something different. And I love that. And I think that's what a lot of, a lot of drivers sh- should be offering and doing instead, yeah, of, just, well, instead of just the, the t-shirts. Yeah. Well, the thing is it's people were constantly always coming up to the trailer to me and Dana, you know. There's always that one thing that you don't have though. You know, there's always that one thing you don't have. You might have hundreds of different options for this person, but they, they, the fans still will come up with something new. <laughs> I, I always joke because it's like, okay, if I get one colored shirt, if I get a white shirt, well, you should have gotten black. And then, okay, I get black. Well, you should have gotten white. And then I get both white. Well, you should have gotten blue. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh you can't make anyone happy no 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 yeah it's always funny how when they come up and the stuff that they you know they come up with or they say but I mean fans are why we we get to be able to do this so absolutely absolutely (laughs) so so do you guys um tow the trailer with the motorhome yeah yeah 
Yeah, because if we didn't have the trailer, we most likely would be able to tow a car or something. But no, we, that trailer, you know, we tow it all year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a lot, but that's so cool. That's so. Yeah, I, you're responsible for it. You know, you got to yeah. make sure it's good to go and it's not going to strand it us on the side of the road it did do that a couple of times this year so we are getting a new trailer better built and like just so we don't have that those kind of issues because logan's mom always feels really bad for when you know we're calling her up saying like oh my god this happened to the trailer or this one happened so (laughs) it's never good always the things that no one thinks about it it happens we are again we are it definitely happened and i feel like we have tons of i mean tons of funny stories that we we can tell about being on the road and just you would never have thought it would have happened but it did it does of course yeah. it does oh I love that yeah. um, that'll have to be like part two <laughs> the story yeah. the stories for uh, sure like I've had some I remember there's times that I call my mom I'm like mom you cannot believe what just happened to me like <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. yeah yeah yep. okay so I want to dive a little bit deeper are you ready yeah I'm ready <laughs> So, um, I know I'm asking these questions based off of obviously like the things I've lived through. And so for you, what would you say off the top of your head? It can be anything you feel is the biggest struggle with this lifestyle that we live. I feel like being just a girl period, being out here is just tough, you know, um I didn't well my first year you know I did not think about some simple simple things that you know that I would be struggling out here with you know uh us girls some of us are on birth control and you know I'm not home for months so how do you do that and um you know we like to get our hair done and our nails and um is it just is a lot different life for sure um you know I have to take really really short showers now and you know and the motorhome life is not made for everybody for sure I know we yeah. have people stay in here you know family that come and see us and um it's funny to watch them in the motorhome because you know they like their houses so <laughs> and don't get me wrong I do and will love our house and it's probably gonna be hard for me to leave it but um I I don't mind the motorhome life you know it's not bad it's just little things that you got to think of about like like those little things and you, mm-hmm. there's probably a hundred other little things that you can think of that you I never thought about you know think about all your appointments like dentist doctor's appointment mm-hmm. if you get sick um you know I had uh, I think what year was it with COVID my twin we Okay. Well, I had gotten COVID on the road and I was really, really sick. You know, where do you go? I had to go to some random doctor's office and get tested and all this kind of stuff. So it just is a struggle for sure. I never thought of it like that because I, a Mike lot and I it. yeah, we, we have a color coordinated calendar that we share and based, based on the schedule. So we're, I mean, we, we are not going across country. We travel a good I'd say the far this is like maybe 10 hours for us but yeah. you know I will look I'll I'll get the schedule for the <laughs> whole year it's like your whole year is already scheduled for you mm-hmm. it's wild and then I'm like okay well when am I going to be home for this amount of time to fit in the dentist yes to get a haircut you're right like you know mm-hmm. you have that one woman that she just you have to do you have to go to her right I- like man you just can't go to like a hair cuttery on the road and get your hair done I mean I got blonde hair and I have uh you know blonde is a little bit different if I'm just instead of just getting it dyed like real dark or something so I like I don't trust people to do my hair so if you ever see my hair really grown out my new business because (laughs) I I haven't been home for months so (laughs) That's yeah. so funny. Oh yeah, my God. I always joke because um sometimes like again the toter life and having to take like really short showers and it's like, well, 
Uh, if you see me with my hair pulled back, it's because that part didn't get washed. Yeah, right. Yeah. I didn't have time to wash my hair. <laughs> it's it's a struggle. It really is a struggle. That's so yeah. funny. Well, the other yeah. thing is I had to really like uh, get into like taking more care of my hair, like mm -hmm. hydrating it more because the water you fill up with and you, you know, think about what you're washing, how hot ha that hard water is. Hi, Bubba. Like it just. I mean, it dried my hair out to no, like, it just, I really had to learn how to keep up with my hair, but that was like, you know, I'm good now. I think I, you know, with being on the road for, this is my, going to be my sixth year. I have everything down. I got everything. Like I know I my so. places that I go to where we stay, you know, like nails, salons or whatever. I know what the good ones are, the bad ones are. So you definitely learn as you go. I think you could totally make a, almost like a guide, like the world of outlaw wives guide, you know, <laughs> this is pretty cool. don't absolutely don't go to this nail salon. They're terrible. Like that's actually a good idea. I should, you I should. I a, a notes list in my phone where like throughout the years, like where we stay, if I like that place, I made a note of it or mm -hmm. like a restaurant that I really like. Cause I ain't going to remember. Yeah. No, absolutely. That, I think that's genius. Cause mm -hmm. that's, what my my dad my family always did was we kind of would try and make a trip out of it whereas with mike we're with a truck and trailer so like the motorhome you can only fit it in so many places so when yeah. you go to that same track to that track you know what's in between where you can stop where you can fit you yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah 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 so do you, hear, do you hear the toy bubba <laughs> I, guess, I guess bubba's up now <laughs> he's up and he's playing oh yeah, so okay I know you said you you get you you have Hannah with you which is incredible what is it like for you well you said you you sometimes have people staying with you in the motor home you know I feel for me I like my privacy you know I I like to unplug again we're on all the time so what's it like do you do you guys get that ever I hope uh yeah pretty much like I mean people do really uh you know they don't want to you know they know this is this is our house this is our home on wheels so they never want to intrude but we always are open for people to stay with us if they need to um it does not happen often at all so you know um you know maybe a couple of times that his dad will come out he'll stay with us there's no big deal um we have a new motor home so this one has a slide and it's a lot more roomier um the one now that we had previous, it had no slide and it was tough having people in there because it felt like just me and Logan were running into each other and he would drive me insane. But like this one, at least I can walk by him and not have to like run into him. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but we, we never mind having people stay in here, but I am like you, I love my, I like my privacy, even from Logan sometimes, you know, I just shut the door back here. And I'll watch TV back there by myself. He can stay up here, play his video games or whatever he wants to do. But yeah. there's a lot of people, that's a common question. How do you guys, you literally live together 24 seven or together 24 seven. How do you not kill each other? Um, there's good and bad days, you know, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. It's, um, me and Logan really um, don't have a problem with any of that. You know, we don't really fight that much though. So it's great. You know, sometimes we get on each other's nerves, but I mean, that's kind of, you know, you kind of correct when I'm looking around the motorhome that you live in a motorhome together. So <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah, it's a wild lifestyle. And so, um, I, we actually, we were talking about it before we started recording and you were talking about how you guys have land. So like right now you, even in the off season, you're living in your motorhome. <laughs> she's like yo yeah, it's great do you uh, ever you're, so you're not far from your family do you ever like call mom and say like hey can I come over for like a 30 minute shower or a bath a bath yeah I love baths and that is one thing that I have yet to have this off season like because I obviously don't have a bath here in the motorhome yeah. uh I you know it's it's a little more tough being in here knowing that we are home just because it's like we did have a house and it was nice to just have that open area and like, but knowing that we're building, making it our own, it's going to be our forever home yeah. is like such a, 
like humbling feeling just because like, you know, I can't complain about this motorhome because it, you know, at least we have somewhere to stay. So I am usually at my mom and dad's house because I don't, I get so bored in here and there's not much to do. Well, you're in it all the time. All you, the time. You need yeah. a new scenery. You need new scenery. Yeah, right? Like you usually get a break, like a three month break from the motor hunt. And then you're like, oh, I, I miss it. I'm ready to go back. No, I'm not getting out of here until next year. <laughs> you're stuck. But that's so true. You know, that that is very humbling and knowing, you know, mm-hmm. it, this isn't forever. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's not forever. Definitely. That's kind of why I agreed with Logan that I could do it one off season yeah. that I can I can live in the motor home. <laughs> oh <laughs> and you're a girl. That I do it nine months out of the year. I can do it for three more. So gosh, I hope my husband doesn't listen to this. Yeah, right. <laughs> no <laughs> but like she can do it. <laughs> it's not for everybody. It's not I can tell you it's not fun though. Like I mean just the simple like, you know, I don't have an oven, you know, and Christmas is my favorite. You know, I can't have a tree. I mean, I have a little, little one, but I don't have my, my typical decorations in here. Like I usually did at the house. And so it's a lot different, but like I said, it's only for a little bit, I guess. Oh, good for you. I love, I'm so excited for you. So, so being at the level, you know, Logan is at, do you feel there was ever really like a learning curve, you know, from when, when it comes to how you handle yourself, you know, whether it's in public or it's online, was there a learning curve? Cause Hey, listen, I've been living this. I, there, I feel like there's learning curves all the time for me. Yeah, no, it, I mean, I feel like that's like a, each year you learn, you know, you learn new stuff, learn like different things, but I agree with you. I feel like, um, yeah, you definitely with the level that Logan is at and just who he is and the sponsors he has, you know, I do have to remember that, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not like, uh, I'm trying to see how I can put this. Like, it's not outspoken. Yeah. Or like, I don't want him to think like, if I would say I'm at a bar or something, I get in a fight, you know, that would spread like wild fire and just like oh my god Logan Shore's girlfriend is you know a fighter or this and that like that is something you don't want you don't want you know or if I'm posting photos of me drinking all the time or Mm -hmm. and his sponsors would see that like it's just more of a judge of character in a way so you do have to be careful with that kind of stuff um which I don't really go out anyway so I don't have to worry about that um but yeah, you do have to be careful about some things that you say or post online for sure. I mean, think about anybody who does, you know, apply for jobs nowadays. Everybody, they, your boss or whatever, they go and look at your social medias. Like yeah. everybody can see what you're doing on there. So you got to be careful. I always say like your social media, it's not necessarily your resume, but it is like people can window shop and they can say like, oh, this absolutely. Is Andy, this is summer. Yes. Mm-hmm absolutely I feel uh in person you know I I see it all the time like you get drunk fans people people start yelling and screaming whether they like you they don't like you they don't know you yeah many times I sit in the stands and they're like especially when I was younger with my dad they'd be saying the most cruel stuff and I just I just want to turn around and punch them in the face right but you can't do that because there's that's your character right there you don't want as much as you want to you got to just you just gotta brush it off I know what you mean it's hard yeah it's but then there's people that they don't they can't bite their tongue so how like you're in the t-shirt trailer have you ever had fans kind of like rally you up or try to yeah for sure um and even when I'm, I go and sit in the stands, I don't do it as much. I don't sit in the stands as much as I used to just because of this situation of people saying stuff to me just to, you know, make me upset or, you know, just to, you know, start something because they're drunk or something. Um, uh, but, you know, you hear things like just stupid stuff and you're just, you want to turn around and just be like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, you just gotta 
humble yourself and just really, and I, it took me a really long time to, to just chill, you know, like, and Logan really, cause Logan's the most humble person I've you ever met. Like, he's the chillest. Like he does not get riled up about really anything. And if he does, it's something serious. So I've learned a lot from him. So, but it, it's tough when you have to hear people talk bad about, you know, the, your boyfriend or husband or whoever it is to you um I mean you obviously the only time I did say something was the one time I heard a fan you know like um Logan had wrecked and I heard like they were behind me saying like that he deserved to wreck because he like I guess cut somebody off or whatever I don't care if it was Logan's fault or not those people have families kids girlfriends wives you know you don't want to see them get hurt you don't want to see anybody get hurt I mean, it can happen for sure in this sport. I mean, you can obviously get even killed, but Mm -hmm. fans, that's one thing that really irks me. Fans just don't see that. And they, you know, they're there to see a show. I think we were just talking about this beforehand and Mm -hmm. they, they're there to see a show and, you know, they just need to remember that these guys are real people, real feelings, real families. And yeah, Yeah. it's, we are the entertainment. I say we, I always say that. I always joke because I'm not the race car driver, but like I put myself, I'm, I got a mouse in my pocket. Like we are the entertainment, the wife, yeah. the girlfriend, the mm-hmm. team, you know, like it takes a team effort to get that car on the track. So that sucks though, like that you feel you can't, not that you can't sit in the sands, but it's almost in a sense, like you don't want to, because you don't want to have to deal with that. Yeah, it is sad because, you know, I only can watch Logan at the feature. So I really, I mean, it does suck that, it, but again, it only happens once in a blue moon. It's just me trying to just avoid that situation because it makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. Um, so I just kind of stay, you know, where I can watch either I'm by myself or, you know, I'm standing in the infield, you know, with Logan's mom or something. But other than that, I don't really enjoy no offense to the fans. I don't enjoy watching with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, like watch- I really like just to watch by myself. <laughs> I feel we are more than alike than we do because yeah. I, I always joke. I'm like, I will gladly sit in the farthest grandstands all by myself. I yeah. do not have a crowd of people with me. I just, mm-hmm. just let me watch. I'm here just for this. Yeah. And- Thank yeah, you. the only time I really enjoyed watching with people was when Logan won the million. I had everybody around me. It was the coolest thing ever. But other than that, I'd like to be by myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one exception. Yes. It was one time only. <laughs> I love that. So, okay. So with that being said, um, hi, hello. Yes. <laughs> won a million dollars. Like he, hi. this year was freaking amazing for you guys. Like I'm so happy yeah. for you guys. But as most know, with more fame comes more haters, comes more naysayers. And I mean, anyone that knows where Logan came from, like mm-hmm. there is a true respect there, but then you're going to get people that want to give their opinion anyways. Oh, so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so how do like, you guys are so humbling, but when you're so humbling, I feel a lot of people really can wear those emotions too. And I mean, I know from all of my drivers, you know, it it can be a lot. So like mentally tolling, but is there a way you guys deal with that? Or is it just like a, no, you know, you get it enough, you just kind of, you're numb to it. I just think Logan and I just don't care. I just think that we just, I don't know, like I'm obviously always going to read things online and, you know, um, but you just got to get to a point where you just don't, you you can't care because if you cared about everybody's opinion, Mm -hmm. you're never going to live a happy life. So, and, you know, Logan knows, you know, how hard he has worked. You know, I know how hard he has worked. Like we don't need people coming and telling, you know, trying to bring him down on things that, or really anything, you know what I mean? Like there's just no, we just, we just let it go. Like there's no reason to get all routed up about something that somebody said yeah because that's what they want you know they want that you know that response that you you know those keyboard warriors out there you they just want you to respond so they can get a reaction don't they 
to yeah. it. Yeah. So the best thing is just to ignore it. And mm -hmm. as much as you want to say something, just it's not worth it. Just moving on. Yes. Yep. I would say out of sight, out of mind. Like I, I look like I live on social media. I can't tell you apparently like our series, our tracks have like dropped schedules. This is happening. That's happening. I'm like, I have not a damn clue. Cause I don't, <laughs> yeah. unless it comes to my like attention, there's a reason. Otherwise yep. I don't want to know, you know, mm -hmm. like, no, I'm good. And it's like Logan, he's, I mean, he is not on social media. You know, people, you know, if you see stuff posted on Logan's pages, it's for, it's someone else because he's just, if, if he did not have somebody to do it for him, there would be no, he wouldn't have anything on social medias. Like his mom back in the day had to make him all this stuff because he didn't want it, you know? So, yeah. but he's in this life that you have to have social media, like your fans want to see it, all of that. So we just, you know, <sighs> you just got to live your day. I feel you there. I so feel you there. As <laughs> Logan's side woman here, do you feel like there are times, you know, when you have to be like, I don't know if I'd say the backbone for Logan, like when things get tough or there's a few weeks when, you know, um, the races don't go well, you're not winning, you're not finishing in the top five. I don't know. Like the dark cloud is lingering over top. Like, do you feel there's ways that you help him handle that, you know, get through that? Cause for me, Oh my God. When my husband is down, it's like, I, I don't even know how to function. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would hope I would, you know, help him, you know, like, I hope that it helps. So, you know, it, uh, yeah, we've had some times where like, I really, I was just like, Oh my God, if we don't have a good night, like this is like, I just prayed in the stands, like, please just finish like fifth or something just, but to Logan he is very hard on himself um I made a post the other I think it was the other week or so about the million on Facebook and I had talked on my post saying how hard Logan is on himself and you know he you know he's the he's the hardest person on him you know like his mind will eat him alive you know if he goes and he expects to win that night and he gets fifth fifth place is not good enough for him so nothing if he's not winning to him if you if you ain't first or last so um and you know we had I did I, this year has been I think a great year but in Logan's mind he's like we can do better and we can do this better and I'm just like okay well you are the race car driver I try my best you know he is the race car driver I don't know really you know I don't work on them I don't you know I don't, I try to keep my opinions to myself. You know, I'm not, if he has a bad night, I ain't going in that trailer and being like, well, why did you not run the bottom? Or why, what, why did you do that? There's no way I'm going and I'll go hug him. That's it. And then when he's ready to talk to me in the motorhome is usually when he's ready. And then, you know, I'll listen to him and give him my, whatever advice I think that might help. But <laughs> that's funny. Cause so, so for me, I'm, so I went from my family who they get out of the car and they would ask me, what did I do wrong? They're always looking on like how to improve. What did I do wrong? So then when I started dating Mike, he got out of the car and I'd be like, this is what you did wrong. And he's like, oh my God. Yeah. So I, I'm like, I was dealing with two different types of people. Yeah. Whereas Mike's like, no, just tell me I looked great. Even though I suck. <laughs> I'm like, how do I do that? So I was like, that Logan's the opposite. He's like, if I suck, don't tell me I did good. I'll be going in there. Honey, you did so good. And you'd be like, I suck. Like that makes him way. It just is. He's the total opposite. He is. It's such a, like a, a, a mind thing for me. Cause you know, and I'll, I'll say things to Mike, like, you know, how we talked about it earlier. I'm huge into personal growth and I try so hard to get Mike to like read books, to listen to a podcast, to work on in here. And he's like, that's not what wins me races. And I'm like, but I kind of feel like it, it can. It kind of does. It kind of can help you. <laughs> you know, because it, it's, if you go into the race already lost, you're not going to win. No, right. And there's times where like Logan's head is like so out of it. Mm -hmm. And I already know like how this night's going to end. You know, he'll, if he qualifies bad, 
<laughs> it just is at that time he the night's already gonna probably go bad because he's such in like a like a head space and if he listens to this I don't care but that's how I feel <laughs> I'm sorry honey but you do he get he gets too wound up on he gets too worried about um I guess like what his mind he, I don't know his mind just takes over and he thinks he sucks and he really doesn't like hello <laughs> mm-hmm. it's I get it I I 100% believe like the races are won in the shop how they build the car and then it comes to the driver so it's mm-hmm. yeah the, the car can win the races but I truly feel it's yeah. the driver has Absolutely. to be um a lot of people don't a lot of people actually don't know this but Logan is his own car chief you know he sets his car up how he wants it throughout the night you know most of the drivers you know they have somebody do that for them um Logan and Jacob were taught from I mean from very beginning how to start doing that you know um so big respect for Logan just because you know I get why he's so hard on himself because you know he's the one that's setting it up you know if he makes a mistake well crap I didn't set my shock this way or you know why didn't my I don't know my right rear didn't have I don't know something you know the stagger or whatever they call yeah. it um but he'll be proud that I just said all those terms that I did <laughs> I actually know something but you pay um, attention you hear I do, I do but there's no way I would ever work on a car I would screw something up I've driven Logan's car back to the pits before, but if that thing was going full force, I'd probably run into a wall. <laughs> so these guys are like crazy. I rode with Logan in a stock car, like mm-hmm. full speed. No, there's no way I would ever ride a sprint car with him because they go 10 times faster. No, yeah. no. My my dad, I mean, no offense <clears throat> to sprint car guys, but he's pretty much like you You can't have brains to, to race a sprint car because like, you you can't be thinking about anything else like if you have any worry in the world like do not get a sprint car no one mistake these guys it's like they're going over 100 miles per hour on some tracks and it's like oh my god one mistake and you know you see some nasty crashes for sure which that's scary this year we I felt like I saw more crashes this year than any other year and it's it's it always like hits me in my core because it could be Mm -hmm. someone I don't care for but at the same time yes. like, it's still somebody it's still because yeah, like, because yeah, most likely like like if one of the world of outlaw guys um right you know I instantly think of you know I know their families I know their girlfriends wives so I instantly think of them you know it's just I can't even Logan wrecked a lot this year too and I just you know your heart sinks every single time you don't know if you don't know you know when they get in that car is this the last time I'm saying I love you or am I going to see you tonight in bed you know so it's it's definitely a very very hard situation sometimes that totally just got me emotional because I think my I dad, know. every it, time it is, every it time. is and people don't think about it but um it's very very tough to think that that kind of stuff which I try not to think about that but when you start talking about everything you do you kind of you know that's why every race I do try to you know say good luck to Logan and that I love you pretty much every time it's every that, time. I'm, I'm the same way you never know you never know but it's the lifestyle we choose it's, yes if anything it's they're doing what they want to do oh they're yeah absolutely yep that's all you can ask for that's all you can ask yep. for okay so this oh my gosh summer we could talk for I know <laughs> ever. So let's, let's close this out okay. with like a tip, maybe some words of advice. What would you tell, you know, a fellow girlfriend or a race wife, you know, someone who either is like living this lifestyle or maybe like you five years ago, they're getting into it. What piece of advice would you offer them? Mm. Well, if you're coming right into it, that's a whole new ball game. There's a lot of advice somebody, you know, I remember when I came on and uh, all the questions I had, you know, what do I bring? What do I pack? Like, do I need second showers? Yeah. Like, how do, how do I wash my hair? Like <laughs> just some dumb questions that you just don't, but 
I mean, if you're coming out, I just think, um, no, I feel like there's tons of advice you can give. I mean, I would just say, try to find your person for one. I mean, you will always have your significant other, but you always need a, a person out there for you for sure. Cause if you don't, you're going to get lonely. Cause it's, it's a brutal, brutal world out there. Um, the race, uh, I get the world of outlaws is a very brutal, brutal schedule. I, you know, I just really recommend finding a friend or multiple friends so that can be there for you if you need them or you know we all like to go shopping you don't want to go shopping by yourself <laughs> and I don't want to take Logan with me so <laughs> neither um, would he probably want to go no no he, <laughs> he's so bored <laughs> and then I feel like with I guess people who are already on the road I guess just maybe and I don't know enjoy it I mean I know like I'm thinking of, I'm just going to enjoy the time that it's just me and Logan, you know, like until we have kids one day, you know, I'm going to enjoy all the time that I can just me and him. Let's go do all the stuff we wouldn't be able to do if we have others with us, you know? So I, love I would, yeah. But I mean, there's a couple of that all people that have kids. Well, yeah. Cause uh, James McFadden had, you know, Maverick and then they had uh, Casey Kane and Amy had their little girl. So they have, it is doable, you know, yeah. Pittman has kids on there. Oh, David Gravel and Jill, they have a, a little one, but Jill doesn't stay on the road. So it's a little different. Yeah. So we'll, I needed, we need to talk to her. We need to talk to her because I am super curious how she is. Jill? Yes. I oh, love her. She, you should talk to her. She's an amazing, she's one of my friends. I, I definitely love Jill. She is, she's great. You should talk to her, see how, how her life is so different. You know, she's away from her husband, you know, for months sometimes. So now they have a baby. So you should talk to her because that would be a whole different perspective. You know, my life would be 100% different than hers for sure. Yes. Amazing. Okay. Good, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you Summer, so much for being on here and taking the time. Um, yeah. What an absolute pleasure. Everyone. I, I don't know if we want to say like follow Summer on social media, but definitely Bubba's helping Paul, right? Uh, he isn't, you can, I mean, I have an Instagram for his actual page, like Bubba's helping Paul on Facebook and uh, Instagram, but you can follow Bubba on Instagram too. He has tons of followers. He, he's pretty funny. Don't, if I would follow him, but um, he's funny, but yeah, you can, my, my account is uh, not private. So you're more than welcome to follow me and see what my life is like outside the road and on the road. So I think people, that's why they do kind of try to follow me in aspect because I do post a little bit more personal stuff of me and Logan. So people, some fans like that. So, so stay tuned for the traveling tips from summer. <laughs> no pressure. Cause I'm going to be watching for him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you again for joining thank in. You. It was such a pleasure. Everyone, if you enjoy this, please like it, share it, tag us on social media, and we will catch you all next week. See ya. <laughs>